There was this sense that creativity was the last remaining stalwart of humanity. And AI can't come for creativity because that's an inherently human act. The past few months, we've seen lots of questions about whether or not that is actually true. My name is Laura Herman. I'm a doctoral researcher at the Oxford Internet Institute, the University of Oxford. Our exhibit is called The Algorithmic Pedestal. The goal is to prompt uh, reflections on the differences between algorithmic and human curation. On one side of the curtain, we have the um, algorithms display, and the other side of the curtain is by London-based artist Fabian Hess. We've been thinking a lot about how algorithmic platforms are shaping what we see every day. Platforms like Instagram, TikTok, Google Images even, and we wanted to bring into question what's the differences between what these algorithmic platforms are deciding to show us versus what um, humans might actually want to curate and represent. We took um, the Metropolitan Museum of Art in New York. They have an open access collection available for researchers to use. We took a subset of those images, fed them into Instagram's algorithm, and also gave them to Fabian. She organized her collection around the concept of loss. I think a lot about how these algorithms um, control this experience of images that we have. So this collection of loss in a way is a form of resistance to that power, that control of our experience. I look at these images with my general knowledge, with my emotional response and yeah, with, with my experience and of course the algorithm doesn't. And I have time, so I've selected these over years and years. The core difference between what the algorithmic curator selects and what a human curator would select is really about the intentionality of those two entities. Those choices might be due to um, considerations of profit, they might be due to considerations of attention grabbingness, um, whereas a human curator is going to make choices for other reasons. One thing that's come up in quite a few conversations I've had with visitors in the gallery is that most of the images that the Instagram algorithm has selected are very recognizable. They're very um, obvious. But some of these images seem very commercial in the way that they're staged. So there's a plate, there's a couch, there's a vase that are laid out almost as if they're products for sale. These algorithms are based on historical data. It's based on pattern matching, based on similarity. So when they're faced with something inherently new, something inherently novel and original, they don't necessarily know what to do with it. And in fact, they may suppress that because they are not uh, trained to handle that information. Of course, we see this come up a lot in political context, questions about what to do with breaking news that may or may not have been validated by fact checkers yet, for instance. But what does that mean for any type of cultural expression? Right now, we're getting into this point where we're all being put into these narrow boxes. We may start to be less likely to come across new ideas. What I'm really interested in is Instagram's algorithm is deciding every second what millions, if not billions of people around the world are seeing, what becomes their cultural reality. It's one single company that is deciding, here's what um, people will see. And then the ripple effects of that are enormous. I'm interested in the downstream effect on the public and on sort of our cultural reality based on the curation that these algorithms are performing. You know, for me, part of this exhibition is to raise awareness of it and to, to talk about it so we can be more conscious and so we can resist it and we can find new spaces that are not controlled by this massive powerhouse that a company like Meta is. Having those conversations about this sort of algorithmic curation and its impact on artistic decision making and process and work um, has been really eye-opening for me and will definitely form a big part of the, the research. We see people spending a lot more time on Fabian's side of the curtains. We've heard a lot of people let out some big sighs of relief that they feel like the human curated side is so much more aesthetically beautiful, so much more meaningful, the sense of the algorithm hasn't, hasn't learned how to truly curate just yet in an artistic context, which is of course a, a positive thing to hear, but the flip side of that is, well, maybe it's not very successful, but we're still letting it do it every day, all day long.